Hey Doombots, Tony Scangili here with a video on the top five spells in DSA as of right now, April 2020. What's important to know is that most of the spells are pretty good in one place or another. So when I've looked at this list, I've discussed it with many other players, and we determined the spells that are pretty ubiquitously great. Spells that do something uh, at either the earliest stages, the unlock of the spell, or at the highest level, that do something nothing else can emulate. Damage is great. There are some spells that do damage that are included on this list, but most of the time it's the utility of the spell that makes them great. Keep in mind, your team is built independent of spells. Spells just improve or counter the opposing team. So with that in mind, I'd like to go with number five, uh, or at least what I and others believe to be the fifth most important spell in the game, and that is Splash Mountain Soak. Now, you don't have to go too far to get it. It's one of the early towers, and you usually get it probably around level 30 or so, especially if you can follow the previous videos I've done and really key in on the teams you need to progress through towers. This spell is very simple. Deal damage, you know, it starts with 50 and then it's 20 per player level. So do the math, if you're at level 60, it's extra 1,200 damage to all opponents. That's not a great amount of damage, right? Then decrease the magic of a random ability by one on each affected opponent. So you're taking a random ability of each opponent and you're uh, taking one energy out of it. So it's one more turn before they get to do it. That's just at a base level. Once you get level two, it has a 50% chance to increase the duration of any harmful or debuff uh, on your affected opponent, which is everybody, by one. Level three is just a small increase of damage. That's nice. But level four is decrease the magic of all abilities by one on everyone. This is a, a complete black hole of value that you can just dump on your opponent and put them way back into the Stone Age. And for a spell that you get pretty early and it's not unreasonable to farm, you can get a lot of value in PvP arena or in a handful of club conquest battles by just taking entire tempo off of your opponent. The damage is good, but that's not why you're using the spell. You're using it because it rewinds their ability to gain any value. Probably the fifth best spell in the entire game. Now moving on to number four, you're gonna see the first spell on this list that is not readily available to everyone. It's part of an event, but it's still that good. The fourth best spell on this list is Bucket of Soldiers. Now, the basis of Bucket of Soldiers is simple. It summons a bucket of toy soldiers. On any teammate's basic attack, it assists deal up to 50 plus 20, you're familiar with the numbers system, to the opponent, has 150 plus 100 per player level health, on turn, attack a random opponent two times. It's not really a random opponent, it seems to always be the opponent you've targeted last, but maybe I'm just lucky. If assisting Woody, assist a second time. Phenomenal. Now, what this does is it takes uh, all of your basic abilities on your team, which may or may not be great, and adds bonus damage to them. Truly phenomenal. Now, if you check the leveling, it really just increases not only the damage, but the number of attacks at the beginning of their turn. So it goes from attacking two times on its turn to three times to four times. This spell can turn the tide of the game. You summon one, and he just starts making dents in your opponent. So much so that you may opt at one point or another to use the basic of one of your characters instead of their high powered ult just because of the extra damage that this does. Additionally, since this does count as a basic, it has a chance of proccing other assists or if another assist occurs, it has a chance of proccing on that assist. For example, if you use Jasmine's special, which triggers Jasmine's assist, which is a basic, it will also trigger the Bucket of Soldiers, making his special one crazy damage attack. The other thing to know, and this is kind of a cool little thing, if you do have Woody, uh, and you clone a Woody with Pan Shadow, which is not on this list, 
it will assist both Woody and the clone of Woody multiple times. So you can technically sustain an entire game mode by cloning Woody over and over again and just basicing and having Woody's damage, which is not going to be great, supplemented by Bucket of Soldiers. One of the best spells in the game, truly a nightmare to fight on offense or defense because sometimes you want to kill it, but it could just be resummoned. And even though it is only available during the event, it's one of those spells that you want to make sure you unlock when the Toy Story event comes around because it's just the value it gives you. And that's number four. So you have to imagine that numbers three, two, and one are gonna be pretty decent. Speaking of number three, we're gonna go right into Golden Hammer. Now, upon first review, Golden Hammer just looks fun, right? Revive a defeated teammate with 15% of their maximum health. To my knowledge, it will always revive the first uh, teammate on yours that passed, that died. That said, uh, it might do something else. All I've ever noticed it revives is the first character that did die. If no teammate has been defeated, grant undefeatable to the teammate with the lowest health and heal them for 15% of their max health. Undefeatable means the next time they would die, they don't. That's it. Simple, right? And it heals them. Huge boost on this spell. Now, if you've checked the levels, level two, it just increases the health a little bit more. Great, becomes a good heal. Number three, 25% speed meter increase for the affected character. Think about what happens if you're PvPing somebody and they want to take out the most important target and because they've killed them, your spells got charged enough that you can revive the target, give them a speed meter increase and have them take a turn even earlier than they might have uh, under normal turn order. Absolutely crazy. And again, level four, just more health, which is a benefit, but not really the meat and potatoes. The ability to revive characters can never be understated, let alone the fact that you can use this to save a character as an off heal if need be. Heals are few and far between in this game. There are a handful of characters that do them and even less that do them well. So a spell that heals or resurrects, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this spell, as early as you get it, can completely change your Sorcerer's Tournament or your PvP Arena experience. One of the only spells I would recommend buying the second you see an offer if it comes up, just because of how it changes the way you play the game. Not even talking about Endgame, where it's basically a staple. That's number three. Number two, another spell similar to Bucket of Soldiers, only available at some times. A bit different though. So let's take a quick look at number two, Foul Play. Or, as I call him, Iago, because it's just Iago. Now, the thing to know about this spell is it is only available during the Jafar Unlock event, the Aladdin team event, but man, is it worth it. First thing you're gonna notice is it deals 50, in parentheses, plus 38 per player level, damage to target opponent and all flanking, or the row that that character is on. That's huge. It's If you notice, everything else is plus 20 per character level. This is plus 38. It's almost double. So it's doing a lot of damage to the people in that row, especially as you progress. You'll notice that early game, when you're level 20 or 30, this spell does a lot of damage, probably more damage than most of your characters can do, but it doesn't fall short like some of the other damage on spells do as you reach the end game. It keeps that number high because it's double what everything else is, just about. And another part it does, purge all helpful effects on those. So if anyone on the row has offense up, taunt, evasion, um, obviously evasion, but it will take those spells off. Then it applies a copy of each purged effect to one random teammate with its duration refreshed. So if you take off offense ups and critical ups and taunts, your characters will get them. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword in that if you take taunt off of a character, you don't know which of your characters will get them, unless you have Jafar, then he always gets everything. But you end up taking away a buff at the right time from the right character. Even a taunt, even if it puts taunt on a character you don't want it to, you still remove the taunt, which is the easiest way to remove a taunt in this game. A lot of times they go through resist checks. Spells don't go through that. 
a spell doesn't re get resisted. It just happens. So you will remove a taunt off of a pesky tank like Mordu or Sully or Gaston and immediately be able to target the target you want. Since spells don't take turns and they just happen during your turn before the action of your character, huge ability to get around the taunt. Now, uh, if you notice if you level, apply a copy of each purged effect to one additional teammate. Mm, basically, uh, it's just adding more effects. So it, it's worded a little weird. It says apply a copy of each purged effect to one random teammate. It takes each individual effect and applies it uh, that is removed and applies it to a teammate. This one does it to two. So you're doubling up. Each effect goes on two people. So if you take an entire row with a total of one effect each, that means each person that it gives of the three different effects you're taking off will get two effects. So great all around. Uh, level three, 30% chance to increase duration of copied helpful effects. You just get them for longer. And if it's an offense up or a critical up, huge, absolutely crazy. If it's a stealth, absolutely amazing. Uh, as for level four, apply a copy of each purge effect for additional one teammate. Again, as you start getting into metas where there's a lot of buffed characters, characters have a whole row of buffs because that's what the spells have done for them so far. This will take everything off and just start dumping them on your teammates. It is a complete table turn on an opponent. One of the most high impact spells you can get and the earlier you get it, you will never ever deviate off of it. This spell is used in every game mode. This spell is never bad because it does great damage and often game changing. And so far, we've gone through four of the top five spells, and they've gotten progressively better every time. The number one spell, it's hard to describe until you've had it done to you, but let's go right into it. The number one spell, the best spell in the game, at least as of right now, is Blue Fairy Magic. I'm just going to go right into it. Cleanse all harmful effects from teammates. Apply the opposite helpful effect for one turn. Take everything bad, flip it. Think of all of the debuffs or negative effects or harmful effects that you've had placed in your team so far. Continuous damage, heal block. Now flip them, and they all have opposites, which is another video for another time. Incredibly crazy. A huge tempo change from a team like the Downtown Villains who, or Madame Nim who take advantage of debuffs to immediately swap off bleed stacks into heal stacks. Absolutely crazy. The second level, increase the duration for all of the helpful effects you put on. So not only flip the bad effects into good effects, make them last longer. Level three, speed meter increase for each cleansed harmful effect. So if you have two debuffs on you, you're getting 60% speed in addition to, to buffs. What a game-changing mechanic that is when you're in the middle of a fight and all of your characters are defense down and then boom, they get to take a turn with defense up. Huge. Level four, 50% chance to apply harmful immunity if no harmful effects are present. That's kind of the icing on the cake in that you can just make sure you don't receive any debuffs for the entire turn. Overall, I know this doesn't do damage. So you're gonna say, well, why do I need it? This is not a spell for PvE. This is not even necessarily a spell for Sorcerer's Tournament. This is the kind of spell you use when you know what you're going into or when you can expect the meta. This is a Club War spell. This is somewhat a PvP arena spell, depending on how high you are. And of course, you can always bring it in if you notice in Sorcerer's Tournament that you will be fighting a team that's heavy on debuffs. That said, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that the earlier you get this spell, the better you are. This truly is a mid to late game spell, but because of what it does and because of its utility, you would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Anyway, that's my top five list of spells uh, as kind of generated by the entire community. Let me know what you think. Now, obviously there are plenty of spells like Duke Kaboom, Wild Imagination, and spirit of mufasa that might be a little bit more impactful at certain stages of the game and they're great too i don't think there's any terrible spells i think there's a lot more spells that work in specific situations these five were just the five spells that work in 
most situations, especially as you progress in the game. But comment below, let me know what you think. And in the meantime, I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.